Welcome to the Stillwater City Council February 5th, 2018 meeting. We have our own cheering section here. You counted us down and we're gonna introduce you in just a little bit. Welcome to the meeting and if everybody would stand, you're gonna lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I'll let you guys start. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And who's the leader who's going to come up here and speak to us? Is there someone designated? He's saying, really? <laughs> He's saying no. Who wants to come up and talk to us? Hi there. Hello. Tell us your name and all of the, where you're, who you're with. My name's William Petum. We have Cage Neal, Logan, Nathan, Victor, Caden, <coughs> my brother Josh. Nick, Brock, Parker, Miles, Eli, and then Owen. And you are with? 828. 828. Welcome, 828. Glad to have you here. Glad to have you here. Is there anything you'd like to tell us about 828, or why are you here tonight? Other than your troop leader, Meiji. I, I haven't been here very long. I got here five minutes ago. Are you trying to earn a badge tonight? Yes, yeah. okay. What's the badge? Yeah. Citizen. <laughs> All what right. he said, right? I think citizenship, I heard that. Citizenship in the community. Citizenship in the community. So you're going to have a great way to learn about the community tonight because you're at the Stillwater City Council meeting. All right, so would you like to take a picture? Sure. All right. You have to stand up. Could I ask who the leaders are? Mayor Noble, may I ask who the leaders are? I just really do yes. like to uh, acknowledge the leaders. Brandon Neal, Water Resources Engineer. <laughs> <laughs> and in your spare time. In my spare time. Well, that's right, this is, uh, this is Troop 828 with Highland Park, or I'm sorry, with University Heights, from the old days, sorry, with University Heights Baptist Church. And, uh, we have a number of leaders here tonight, and since now I'm on stage, I might be a little bit of a deer in the headlights, just like the boys, but uh, I'll start by saying we have Rob Morris over here, we have W.A. Petum, and we have Neil DeArmond, and Jennifer Summers, and that's right, I'm not going to let you off the hook, Chloe, we have, <laughs> we have Chloe Summers as well, so. They're really excited to be here. Thank you guys for having us. Thank you all for your service. Mm -hmm. Anybody else want to ask a question or make a comment? Get to stay for the whole meeting and awesome. Yeah, looking forward to some public input. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No pressure, everybody, but they have to sit here the whole meeting. Good to have you guys. It's great to have you all. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Okay, with that, I call the meeting to order because I didn't do that before. <laughs> And that brings us to the consent docket. Counselors, does anyone wish to remove or clarify an item or is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve the consent docket. Second. 
We have a motion and a second to approve the consent docket. Please vote. And with a vote of five to zero, the consent docket is approved. <clears throat> that brings us to public comment on agenda items not scheduled for public hearing. I would like to remind the audience, are these, excuse me for one second. These are on public hearings, right? Okay, so we don't have any. Real quick, just a minute. Okay, we're going to skip number four because we don't have anybody for public comment. We are going to item number six, public hearings. Receive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, receive public comment regarding a request to close Scott Avenue between Monroe Street and Washington Street. Close easements at 920 West Scott Avenue and 510 North Washington and close an alley at property addressed at <coughs> 705 West University Avenue, CC-18-06. Mr. Norman, <laughs> Mr. Dorman, did we have good notice on this? Yes, ma'am. Mr. McNichol. Lance Gross, development uh, review manager, will be providing that report. Thank you. Thanks. Lance Gross, uh, development services. The first item is a closing uh, for Oklahoma State University. <clears throat> The closing requests are located north of Hall of Fame in Washington and the south side of campus at University in Hester. There's a total of four closings, uh, two easements, one street, and one alley. On the map, you can see the one on the north. It's an easement uh, for NOC located under uh, it's under construction and there are no utilities in this location. The next one is located right here. It's an easement. It's for the Monroe Street parking garage. It's already built. And the central plant which is under construction and there are no utilities located here. The one on the south side is Scott Street. It's proposed to be a private drive. OSU owns property on both sides, and OSU has built private utilities in the right-of-way. Uh, sewer will be privatized, which prevents the need for a right-of-way agreement uh, for OSU utilities. And then the, <clears throat> the last one is located just south of, uh, south of campus, and it's an alley for the McKnight Performing Arts Center, currently under construction, and there are no utilities in this location. Any questions? Counselors? Okay, at this time, I will open the public hearings, and the first person to come up, and I want to Oh, we don't not for this one. Okay. I will close the public hearing. No speakers on that one. And ask staff to come back. Staff recommends approval uh, of the of the request. Hey, okay. counselors. Questions? Motion? Motion to approve the request. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve CC-18-06. <clears throat> Please vote. With a vote of five to zero, CC-18-06 is approved. That brings us to item B, receive public comment regarding a request for a preliminary, preliminary planned unit development for 1220 West 12th Avenue and to change the zoning from RSS residential single family small lot to O office and CS commercial shopping. This is continued from January 8th, 2018. It's CC-18-08. Mr. Nor 
Dorman. I don't know why. Norman and Mr. Dorman. I'm sorry. Mr. Dorman, did we have good notice on this? Mr. McNichol. Uh, again, Lance Gross from Development Services will provide the report. Thank you. This is a map amendment in PUD located at 1220 West 12th Avenue. A report has been provided to you in your packet which talks about the history of the overlay which will be brought to you at a future meeting. The subject site is indicated by the hatch pattern on the map located over here. The site is located on West 12th Avenue with a small extension onto 11th Street. There's 11th right there. The current zoning is RSS, residential small lot single family. Surrounding zoning districts are RSS, office, and RSS PUD, and multifamily urban to the north. The applicant has requested an office PUD on all the property except for the southwest corner. And the map over here on the left shows the, the proposed layout. The request for the southwest corner is a commercial shopping uh, plan unit development, which is located right down here. The applicant has <coughs> specified that all permitted uses in the office district be allowed in the requested <coughs> office zoning district. The statement of intent specifies that the CS zoning will only allow for a pharmacy. So a pharmacy would only be allowed in this site right down here. The comp plan indicates this property as low density residential. Low density, low density residential includes neighborhood scale commercial. Typical neighborhood scale commercial is smaller, less intense uses that can be incorporated into a neighborhood by design. This is a view uh, looking to the north from 12th Avenue. It's a vacant lot except for one tree. This street view is looking to the south from 11th Avenue. A six foot privacy fence is located on the left side of the photo on the property line and was constructed by the property owner of the adjacent single family residence. The street on the right is Blakely Street. The development along Blakely is a PUD and consists of duplexes. This is a site plan that was shown on the previous plan. This one's a little bit, a little bit easier to read. And after I state some of the, the comments from this map, I'll indicate how they relate to the, the proposed uh, overlay zoning. And just to give you a point of reference, the overlay zoning, the proposed overlay zoning is actually, the neighborhood conservation is up here and the mixed use would be this, this portion down here. The six buildings are situated in a line on either side of the property with the front of the buildings facing toward the interior of the property. This does not meet the mixed use overlay of facing the street with a door, window, and porch. The access is from 12th Avenue, which is down here. Uh, this does not meet the mixed use overlay, which, which states no access from 12th Avenue. Currently, the plan also shows access to 11th Avenue, but the Planning Commission recommends that this access be for emergency vehicles only, and that's located up here. Parking is located on the interior of the property in front of the buildings and small extensions access from the center drive. The center drive goes basically all the way through the center of the, the property. 95 spaces are proposed uh, and only 93 spaces are required. This meets the uh, mixed use overlay of no parking in front, of, in front of the buildings. The pharmacy will, will be located 3,000, or will be approximately 3,000 square feet 
and will have a drive-through window that is located on the interior of the property and will not be visible from the street. The drive-through is on the north side of the pharmacy and has 60 feet of queuing distance that allows the queuing of two cars, which is required for the use. That drive-through would be right here, right adjacent to the uh, pharmacy. This does not meet the mixed use overlay <clears throat> with the drive-through window, size of the structure and the use. The square footage of the, of the remaining structures is 3,344 square feet, while the southeast building is just over 3,000 square feet. Uh, none of these meet the mixed use overlay of maximum 2,000 2, square feet. There's an existing privacy fence on the north side, which is right along here, and also along here, uh, which was constructed by this homeowner. The applicant proposes a six foot privacy fence on the east and west property lines that would extend along here and along here. The Planning Commission has recommended an eight foot privacy fence. The overlay, the proposed overlay requires a seven foot fence. The proposed landscaping is located in various locations on the property and exceeds the, the code requirements. The landscaping and buffer also meet all the requirements of the mixed use overlay for the continuous planting of shrubs at the base of the fence. There's a floodplain on the south side of the property adjacent to 12th Avenue. The preliminary drainage study was submitted with a preliminary PUD and has been approved. The final drainage plan is required with the final PUD application. This is a conceptual rendering of one of the structures. The statement of intent states that all the buildings will be masonry with a composite shingled roof with a maximum roof pitch of eight to 12. The typical hours of operation will be no earlier than 7 a.m. and no later than 6 p.m. for all uses. This does fit in the overlay hours of operation from 7 to 9 p.m. Any questions? Could you repeat the hours, Lance? Yes. Uh, for the, uh, the PUD, they're proposing it's from 7 a.m. in the morning until 6 p.m. in the evenings. That's what's proposed in the PUD. For the, the proposed overlay, it would be 7 a.m. in the morning until 9 p.m. Could you reiterate the, um, I don't know, you kind of gave a definition of what neighborhood scale commercial means? Yes. Could you, could you repeat that part? Certainly. And is, it, is it a defined term in the code or is it a, a general idea? It, it, it's, it is listed in the comprehensive plan and it's, uh, it's a general idea, basically. Yeah. And let's see. It basically talks about neighborhood scale and that neighborhood scale commercial should be in keeping with uh, different uses for that relate to the neighborhood, but also at a, a small, small scale as well. And, you know, a typical uh, office or residential style office building would, would be a neighborhood scale. Okay. But that's, there's not a strict definition there that what constitutes neighborhood scale. We just kind of decide if we think it's neighborhood scale. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Yes. You were talking about the fences. Uh, the developer had proposed, tell me if I'm incorrect, six foot. Correct. Planning Commission said eight foot. Correct. The standards say seven foot. The proposed overlay, that is correct, say okay. seven foot. And who would be responsible for this fence, and what type of fence would it be, and who would be responsible for the upkeep? Okay, yes. The uh, commercial development or office development, this PUD, the person, the developer would be responsible for installing and maintaining the fence. Yes. And it would, the fence would be as to oh. what height we set or? Yeah, basically what you, what you say. And uh, 
traditionally it would be say like a wood wood stockade fence and did you say there was anything else as far as uh, sh greenery shrubbery that goes around there also there to help there, with noise th there are certain areas i think two different areas where shrubbery would be planted and let's see i can <clears throat> i can show you that on the map is it along the fence line yes that is correct yes one area right up here and an area right down here adjacent to the parking okay and you had pointed out one spot where the homeowner had installed the fence was that that by 12th street uh, actually oh. it's uh, there's a little bit of a fence down here existing but there's also a, a solid fence that goes along here and also along here okay is the developer going to replace that so it all looks the same all the way around essentially that's what would be proposed yes yes other questions yeah within the um, <coughs> the report the review criteria and the um, I guess the findings it talks about the, the proposed PUD uses are compatible with the development of the surrounding areas um, and your report shows that the surrounding the PUD is compatible with the surrounding development of office and medical uses on the south side of 12th Avenue. Did you all look at whether it was compatible with the residential north uses to the north side? Uh, uh, to the north of this site? Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, from a standpoint that a low intense office use would be compatible adjacent to uh, residential as long as there were proper screening and buffer. Is there a uh, sort of definition again of what compatible means is that just a determination we have to make whether we think it's compatible or not it, yeah it's a determination that you would you would have to make okay. yes Lance once final plans are done for whatever they're proposing would they need to come back and actually present that to us again just to let us know where what it looks like and what it's gonna the, the exact scale of what, what they're going to do they're they're not required to with a uh, final PUD but that's you know something that you can always request you had mentioned a few times I just want to be clear on this that um, it wasn't compatible with the overlay district I think you'd said in one point and wasn't and something else wasn't compatible with the PUD What are we supposed to do with that when it's not compatible? I don't. Well, I had a, a similar question, and, and this may be for, for John more than for you, Lance, but if the, if the overlay had been set for this area as it was proposed originally, would this PUD still be able to be approved uh, with, even if the, the overlay was already in place? Yes. Under the same general uh, process that we're that we're taking now the underlying uh, any the underlying zoning requirements would would be the overlay and so the PUD would be variation from that okay so if we had the, the the overlay in place at this point it wouldn't necessarily preclude us from from approving this PUD on the same terms we could approve it now that is correct I don't know if that kind of answers your question but it doesn't really one way or the other it kind of doesn't matter if the overlay is already in place that's right. Okay. Just want to be clear. More questions, counselors? I, I have a lot of questions and comments, but I think I'll leave. You'll wait. Okay. 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 So at this time, I will open the public hearing. And we have several speakers. You each get five minutes, and the timer will go off because of. Uh, the number of speakers that we have if you could stay within the five minutes and if you if brevity is appreciated if you can make it in less than five minutes that's great too if you're standing up to say something that someone already else has said you you may say I am standing up to say I agree with them or you can say what you would like to say so with that said when you come up would you please state your name and your address and the first one is Robert Moore My name is Robert Moore. I live at 5310 Southwestern Stillwater, Oklahoma. 
I am here uh, because I have four properties that are listed in this area that are all tied together. Uh, on Adams directly across the street from Stillwater Medical Center Plaza. And the plan, the way it's set up, has split them in half to where two of them are commercial and two of them are in the residential area, which makes it very difficult to do much with. And I am here for the reason of saying that I'd like those to all be commercial because that was the reason I got them thinking that as the development happened, it would be something. These properties are not in great shape. Uh, they, uh, we've been working on them, but some of them was bought from us. One of them was bought from an estate that uh, is not in the greatest of shape and probably won't be there very long because the gentleman lived there for his whole life of 88 years. He's purchased from an estate. But I'm here to, to request commercial zoning for those properties because it's very difficult, like Mr. Ebert's property. The group that's there requested that all that property not be split in half, and I just noticed that was being developed and thought about. And so it makes it very difficult to develop these properties. And uh, also, Mr. Ebert's property and my property both are not in floodplain, even though the front part of his was before they went through all the process, I believe, to take care of that. Everything to the east is in the floodplain, which makes it more difficult to develop. Uh, I have had quite a few people contact me about wanting to develop in this area. Some were uh, local business people, a local pharmacy, other than one listed already. Uh, a couple of physicians that would like to build buildings that they could be in for 30 years and own themselves. Um, I've been contacted by local entrepreneurs wanting to build sandwich shops. I talked to some people over at the hospital and they are in dire need of having something to support them. I made a phone call and talked to some people and there was a uh, talk to the Stillwater Medical Center Plaza. There are several doctors over there. There are the pediatricians, the neurologists, the ENTs. There's also the uh, hospital business offices and the lab are over there. And I know that just one of those practices has 30 employees, over 30 employees in it. And I don't know how many years are and how many are in the other one, but there's a lot of employees over there as well as the number of patients that go through there, sometimes 50 to 100 in one practice. I don't know about yours, and I'm not trying to say anything about it. I don't know about the ENT, but I do know about the pediatricians. And there are a lot of people over there, and those people need to be supported. And an aspect of uh, what we have done if we don't have some type of positive commercial development in this area to allow a bank that has contacted me and says we'd like to have a bank to supply all those people because if this area develops like it seems like it will in the next three to five years there may be three or five buildings there six seven they have room for a lot i don't know what their plan is but it doesn't look like they're going to stop the way it's developed and as this grows what happens if we have 20 25 doctors 250, 300 employees and 1,000 patients going through there. Somewhere there's got to be some commercial development or places for doctors to build offices, for pharmacies, for banks, uh, for, for people that want to be entrepreneurs and put in something that can supply these people with lunches. I talked to a person today over in those areas and they said that they have to leave and drive to Perkins Road or drive to Main Street and fight the college tracks but get something to eat, eat it on the way back or else go to the food trucks that are out there. They'd like to have something as another option over there. Just some of the things that could be done to help these people out. Uh, Dr. Wedlake, you probably hear about it all the time about people wishing they had more there but be that as it may, I know that uh, support staff, these are all local business people that are contacting me. They're not chains. They're not uh, they're local pharmacies, they're local business people. People, I've been here 30 years. I've raised my kids here, my grandkids are here. I assume I'll be here till I probably die. And local business is what we're looking for in this area. We're not trying to invade on the private sector and invade on the houses. We're just trying to take what's there and develop it for this. I remember several years ago, 30 years ago, I was talking to someone about this the other day that brought it up that 35 years ago we had the same issue going when we were trying to do some commercial development from Maine to Perkins with Hall of Fame. This is nothing like that, but on a larger scale it became a commercial issue where there was a lot of opposition. And the city 
the city commission made the right choice and I can't imagine where we'd be today if we didn't support the structures that were there and if this hospital doesn't get the support I'm worried where we're going to be in a few years without uh, something to support those structures. Sorry for that's taking okay. So are you speaking on behalf of the hospital? I'm no I'm speaking on behalf of myself. I have okay. four properties and two of uh -huh. them are in that and I'd like them all to be zoned commercial so we can develop when you so purchased I'm sorry when you purchased the property was it commercial it was residential correct? Yes, how I purchased them, they, one of them came to me, and then the other came to me, and as I started buying them, another one came to me, and then the third one I bought from an estate, or the fourth one. Thank yeah. you. I, I just would like to make the point, Mr. Moore, and I appreciate your comments, but um, tonight's meeting, we're not making any decisions about zoning any of the rest of the land one way or the other. This meeting tonight, the only decision yes, before us is the PUD. And so I, I don't know, if, if you have a specific comment, I assume you support us approving this plan yes, at this point. Yes, I support what you're doing. But we're, yeah. well, the, there will be another public meeting to talk come about. Up, and this is the first chance I've had to be here. I appreciate so it. So that's why I'm here. Okay, I just want to make sure you knew that we weren't going to yes, cover that, that Thank tonight. You. All right. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is Michael Oliver. Hi, my name is Michael Oliver. I live at 1123 South Gray. And thank you for giving our neighborhood the opportunity to shape our own future. <clears throat> As we're all aware, the original zoning change request led to the development of the neighborhood conservation and mixed use overlays. The overlays as presented by the neighborhood kept the neighborhood intact while allowing some limited development along Washington Street. Uh, you have a chance tonight to keep our neighborhood as we want it. The PUD request should be denied. If the request is approved, it ignores the C3 plan, the transportation plan for 12th Street, I'm sorry, 12th Avenue, and the overlays as they have been preliminarily approved. This would set a precedent that the city of Stillwater is not serious about the C3, the transportation plan, or our overlays, and would lead to what I call commercial creep into our neighborhood. The residents of the neighborhood will be the ones most impacted by your decision tonight. And we hope that you will listen to our desires as expressed by the overlays and deny the PUD. Any questions? Councilors. Um, what are your thoughts on how this proposal has changed since it was initially proposed a year ago? The, my understanding is the initial proposal was for apartments or duplexes. In my opinion, the office, medical offices are better than apartments but the pharmacy is my biggest concern that is going to draw traffic into the area that it doesn't draw now. And the cut onto 12th Street as is proposed, I think sets up a potentially dangerous traffic situation that 12th Street does not have a center turn lane and could cause traffic to stack on 12th Street trying to get in and out of the property. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is John Pollock. John Pollock, uh, 1106 South Adams Street. <clears throat> and I'll make this as short as I can. We all know this has gone back for a year or so. And the initial request was apartments on the north half, offices on the south half. And I made a statement that's been oft repeated and over the period of a year, I think it's uh, maybe been a, misunderstood a few times, <clears throat> but I said that uh, it might actually be better to have offices next to me than apartments because you know after hours and on weekends, there probably wouldn't be any parties or traffic. Or <laughs> and <clears throat> I think some people took that to mean that I would prefer offices to housing well if you know if it was my choice I'd like to see houses back there so I just I wanted to clear that up that was just one little thing but I had come back to me recently and some people thought oh I wanted offices well I can live next to offices but I'd rather have houses any questions <laughs> okay thank, thank you. you our next speaker is Shirley Weeks. Good 
evening. My name is uh, Shirley Weeks. I live at 71 University Circle. I've been wondering if someone shared with you their story that if people like me had got their way, Stillwater would just be a cabin on the creek. If you have heard this story, I wanted you to know that people like me would have asked the Cabin Creek Council to adopt safe housing and water standards to promote development of a safe, desirable, affordable neighborhood. Michael is uh, an excellent spokesperson about the issues and he represents many people in this area and many outside the area who support neighborhood preservation. We support Michael's statement. I would urge you to vote no on the PUD as it does not follow the straight 12th Street overlay vision or standards. From the very beginning meeting that was organized, it was stated by all of the residents that we were opposed to commercial development in the area. We discussed mixed use, we adjusted to mixed use, but not to commercial use. A no vote could create an opportunity for the neighborhood overlay the developer to work on a PUD that would be beneficial to the community. I truly appreciate that you, that the council brought the overlay up when we were discussing this earlier, helped us to develop the overlay. Many of these issues were discussed. Uh, we appreciate your support of the overlay, but I'd urge you to vote no to commercial zoning. Thank you. Thank you. And our last speaker is Deb Meinke. Uh, counselors, Deborah Meinke, I live at 1023 South Kings. Um, mostly I would like to concur with Michael's points that he made uh, in opposition to this uh, PUD. Um, I also wanted to mention that um, just listening to Mr. Moore uh, comment about his hopes for the future, it seems like uh, if this PUD is granted that there will be increasing pressure to commercialize other parts of the north side of 12th Avenue to the detriment of an um, integrated residential neighborhood. And so I, I would definitely uh, ask you all to uh, reject this PUD and to try to keep the north side of 12th as a residential area. There are uh, existing structures on the south side of 12th that will be, uh, that are vacant currently that could be easily uh, accommodate the office needs that have been uh, presented here tonight, I think. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Okay, at this time I will close the public hearing and ask, oh. Uh, I'm sure we'll uh, sit over here and I don't have any paperwork. I did not get it. Sorry. You sign up before the meeting or you can go online to to have them up here. It's up to you, it's the applicant. Okay. Okay. Would you like to come up and say something? <coughs> I'm Mike Ebert at 2206 Stone Point Court in Stillwater. Sorry, the confusion. I uh, actually had, I didn't know you could send them in electronically, but I was told my name came in. Sorry about that. Anyway, I have mountains of paper, as you probably do too, and, and I came here with a list of questions that we should perhaps ask, and I thought, you know, we've been through this so many times. It really goes back to September, so we're on about a year and a half and we've changed and added and listened and we have, we have never once violated a law or uh, failed to attend meetings that we were asked to attend. Uh, 
So I don't have a lot to say. I think you guys probably have all the information available to you right now. Um, if you have questions for me, I'd be glad to ask them. But th it just seems to me like, you know, well, this is going on a year and a half. Uh, now, our, we've progressed our PUD, and it's caught and passed the neighborhood overlay district that was, I'm not going to have exact dates, but I think we were told this would be available something like uh, last, I mean, in sometime in 2017, and here we are in 2018. So we're here to present the PUD uh, without the overlay district on it. It's not a part of our, of our uh, plan. So uh, things that we've, with the planning committee, you know, the, the north entry, we never really wanted to uh, take traffic through the neighborhood. Uh, at some point, we did some trading with the neighbor to the north so we would at least have access if we needed it. We don't need it. Uh, so it's much simpler to take traffic to 12th Street. Seems where it ought to go. Uh, I think we've already covered the issues of whether we can get a, uh, access onto 12th Street. We've covered the issues of how large buildings should be and, and you know, at some point, uh, I can't even tell you for sure if this is still a part of the uh, overlay district or not, but it was preferable to have bars serving alcohol to a pharmacy. I never quite got that, but, and perhaps that's been taken out of it. I really don't know. I just got too many pieces of paper here. So anyway, I would like to just ask and answer questions for you, because surely you have some questions. If we do, we will call you up here. We know that you're sitting back there, and if any counselor has a question. I'll ask a question now, if that's okay. Absolutely. Um, the idea, the, the question of, of need has been brought up about whether we need additional office space on 12th Street, given the um, other stuff that's been built on the south side. Uh, do you have tenants lined up? Do you have like a, a list of people who are going to be occupying these six buildings at this point? Or what, what's the status of that? If you've read PD, it's to be done in phases. It won't be built without demand. We have obviously the, the pharmacy that's, that's going in. It's lined up. We have no other absolute buyers, renters, or anything for anything else. So again, I think the PD is uh, set up in four or five different overlays. Mm -hmm. The issue of, uh, we don't have a drive-through. We have a pickup window. And there's a lot of difference between a drive-through for a fast food restaurant and a pickup window where you've called ahead, maybe you're, you, you can't walk to the, the store. You just go pick up your drugs at a window. We can stack three cars there and we can stack about probably as many as five more going, I mean, they're, they're in the street we would build, but certainly not back onto 12th Street. Is it one lane or two lanes? Two lane. The so street stacking be. cars deep? No, that's, is that what that's you're saying? Just, that stack lane is just part, it's just, that's all it is, is a stack lane. And uh, it's, not a, it's not a part of the street, and you would, I don't have the, I have, actually I do have the drawing, but if you look at your drawings, you'll see that if you were driving into the addition, where it happened to be cars, park there, which is very unlikely, then you would have to stay in the street which we build, which probably won't happen. Councilors, any other questions? Mike, I do have a question. Uh, I was looking at the preliminary planned unit development application, and it, it calls um, height, orientation of signs, typical elevation drawings, um, and I, I, actually I was pretty confused when I looked at the, the building pictures because it doesn't look like site plan at all. I, I think that they were just supposed to be typical buildings, but I had um, more specific um, drawings. You have no doubt in your career had to hire some architects to do some design work. Well, we built this building never intending that this would be the building we would build exactly, but we were uh, 
So they want masonry, or we do too. We want composition shingles. We're gonna put a nice looking building. This will not be what's built, but it was just a concept drawing that we could put in with the PD that should have satisfied the need. We, we weren't going to hire an architect when we don't a zoning. It's money enough to get through a PD. You may or may not know what it costs to get a PD, but it's, it's expensive. So then you go to the next step to an architect for a building. We created a footprint within which the building would have to be built. And we have our, all the necessary utilities are, are on site or will be on site. Actually, they're on site for this. But. This really has been frustrating, hasn't it? Hmm? This really has been frustrating. For all of us, I'm sure. Yeah. Anything? Like, my guy, I do have one question. In the current plan, <clears throat> how would that change if the 11th Street access was completely taken away? Well, Instead of leaving it, it open for emergency vehicles, if that were to be closed, how would that affect your current plan? Well, actually, I think it will maybe, for everybody concerned, it might make it better because we would just own and mow that piece of ground for a long time. I don't think the neighbors want traffic going into the neighborhood. We would create, if you'll notice on that plan, there's two parking lots on the far north side. We'd create a hammerhead turnaround for emergency vehicles and it was suggested at the planning commission that maybe a crash gate. That's really not a very good answer for that, nor is an eight foot fence for that matter. If you can imagine an eight foot fence that, I don't know, I don't know exactly where they dreamed that up, but it's there. We'll go to the Board of Adjustment on that one. Okay. I, did that answer your question? I mean, I just don't think we want to, it, it doesn't adversely affect the, in the development, mm -hmm. but I think it helps with the neighborhood. Agree. Okay. Mike, I'm going to piggyback on what you said about the fence. Uh, that was going to be my, my question. I, uh, we talk about how we are trying not to, I, I think that there has to be a point where you have business and neighborhoods that do kind of flow together. And so it and just seems like you're just, you're really, you're really trying to divide the neighborhood and the business side of things. Um, a six foot fence or appropriate landscaping, would that be something you'd be open to as far as just, I'd like for it to still have a neighborhood feel to it without it having just such a definition of Would you pull your microphone a little closer to <laughs> <laughs> um, I think just with the fencing, just the eight foot fence um, seems just a little bit like you're really trying to divide the business and the neighborhood side of things. Yeah, perhaps. It's not a big deal to put an eight foot fence. I can't imagine living next to, next to one, but you know, if that's what the neighbors want and that's what the council and the commission want, well, that's what we'll build. You, re you realize that you just put money in the engineer's pocket because an eight foot fence now has to be engineered. That's fine, we'll do that. But I, I just think an eight foot fence is just, uh, I wouldn't want it. But, well, but it will be in addition to the fence. Right. If you look, there's, there's lots of landscaping at the fence locations too that two places right but not all the way around it well did you look at your drawing i did it's it, they're they're shown no, that's again it's all conceptual in a way i mean we'll put them it may be two it's going to be there there's going to be the adequate number of trees and adequate number of shrubs and sizes of trees and all the things that are that you're required to do we're not going to try to break the rules or do anything like that so so here lately, why are, we, why are we at an all commercial? Well, it was suggested that that may be, not, we didn't make it up. That's not what we originally proposed. It was, it was suggested that perhaps that was the thing that would be passed by the council. So I'll- uh, But that wasn't suggested by the council to you. That was someone just told you that maybe the council will do that. We you didn't say it? No. <laughs> Okay, anybody else? My, Mike, I, I know that, um, that you, you want to do the right thing. And the, I've talked to the, the residents, and they want to do the right thing. We all want to do the right thing. And it's, this has gotten so complicated that it's just hard to figure out where to start talking. Mm -hmm. um, to, to go back to the fence, I, I like uh, Councillor Zanotti's point about if, if you're going to do something like this in a neighborhood, it shouldn't just be like a sore thumb in the middle of the neighborhood. It should be integrated into the neighborhood and, and 
if it's going to be a pharmacy, I don't think a, a, a stockade fence um, surrounding it is, is very safe. Pharmacies are targets for um, uh, a crime, and uh, I would rather have open um, space. I think in the, in the Planning Commission's recommendation, it was for sound. Um, oh, I sound, think, yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, landscaping that exceeds the requirements would be more appropriate for sound abatement than a stockade you're, fence. You're right. You almost have to get the fence there because it takes a few years to, for landscaping to grow. Mm -hmm. You have to buy big stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can. To, to, I don't think we'll, I don't, I'd be surprised if that it was agreed upon that that was the, I think the, the mix of the two is better. Uh, but that, me. I mean, those are details. Right. I, I was um, um, surprised at how different this was in the original. And um, well, so I, do, I. I, <laughs> I do like the idea. I, you know, I've, uh, the council knows that I've always been um, in favor of anything that goes by residential should be development application. Um, I was hoping for more specificity and something that we could actually, that the neighborhood and that I could actually look at and say, this is what it's going to look like. This is where the signs are. This is where, and uh, I, Mike, I know I, I hired an architect to do a planned unit development. I know oh, it's yeah. very, and there should, I, I would think, something between um, this type of a piece of paper and something as complete as a full plan unit development well, the, application. Well, the, if you, I guess you weren't privy to a full size sheet. You've got the small sheet. It's a little hard. It's, I mean, the, the 30 by, yeah. 24 by 30 inch papers out there somewhere at City Hall. And it's easier to read for sure. I have to use a magnifying glass to see mm -hmm. this yeah. myself, but that's fine. Yeah. Well, I, I get that. Uh, any other questions? Anybody else? Thank you. I would like to ask someone from the neighborhood about what you would like as far as fencing. Do you want to come up and since you came up and repeat the question, I want to make sure I understand it. When the neighborhood met with the developers, what kind of fencing was discussed? What does the neighborhood suggest as far as fencing height? Do you want fencing? Do you want more than fencing? Well, essentially, the, uh, and of course this is a general statement, I think that uh, what we had written into the uh, overlay plan we thought would do a good job. Now, you know, we, we considered the noise issue and we considered the, uh, I guess you call it privacy issue, you know, to, to screen the business from the neighborhood. Uh, I, and Mike, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know that we even actually got into a discussion about the fences, did we? Yeah. Uh, um, I, I, I certainly understand uh, Ms. Darlington's uh, points, you know, that there's, there's more than one way to do this. And uh, we might have a template that doesn't mean that there wouldn't be uh, occasions when uh, some variation from that template might not be an improvement. And I, I, I think I speak for the rest of us. You know, it's you know whatever works. Okay. You know, okay. Does that answer your question? It does. Okay. It does. Thank you. Counselors, any other questions? Can we can we get some clarification on the PUD process at this point? What happens after, and maybe this is a question for Lance or for Paula. Go ahead. 
the process works in a manner where the preliminary PUD comes before Planning Commission, then on to uh, City Council. The final PUD just goes through staff administratively. And, you know, we go through and make sure that it matches and relates to everything that's within the PUD. So given uh, Councillor Darlington's concerns about the lack of specificity in this plan, could it be approved with the requirement of a more specific plan being presented before staff is able to recommend? Yes, and you can actually uh, request it to City Council if you wish. We could approve it at this point and say we want it to come back to us before it goes through. Correct. So how would that how would that look just so I'm clear so if we approve this tonight basically what we're doing is we're approving the zoning with the caveat that we want to see a more specific architectural the zoning is in place at that point correct that is correct okay. yes yeah you, you can make that uh, that motion or, would, or that item in your motion does that go back to Planning Commission again if we're asking for more specifics on the PUD does it go there first then come here well, the PUD actually contains more than just the zoning. It does have the, uh, the approximate location of buildings, and there's a whole page full of requirements here as to what the application has to require that the previous council approved. So, I mean, the application has to comply with that. So all of that information is in there before it can even come before you. Um, so and, and staff would approve yes. that and say when it's ready to come back to us. Right. I mean, normally they don't come back. It, it, once you approve it, you approve. When you approve a PUD, you approve the underlying zoning or percentages thereof, and you approve the conceptual, the concept that they have you. So the location of the buildings and those things, that's more or less set at this point, which if, if you were to approve that. So that's what makes this different than a, than a traditional zoning where you would simply approve just the uh, the use itself you're actually approving the location of certain buildings and if there are setback requirements or uh, height limitations bulk standards things of that nature then those are incorporated within the PUD document so uh, you do approve all of that as well as just the, the zoning itself so what is the what is the future approval by staff then what what kinds of things would change that staff has the to approve if we're basically approving the entire PUD now. Well, there's not a delegation to staff. What staff does is verifies that everything's done, and then there's a final PUD that I thought that went back to Planning Commission. Does it, it doesn't go to Planning Commission anymore. Okay, but it but there is the list. They can't approve anything that's not previously, mm -hmm. and that is not within the context of the ordinance that authorizes the planned unit development process to begin with. Shirley Week, 71 University Circle. Can you approve uh, the PUD and, uh, and eliminate the commercial section? Legally, yes, you can approve this. So if we left the zoning as it is now, then it would just hold a legal non-conforming status with what? With no, you would have to approve a change to the zoning because uh, to you, office? Can't you can't create a legal nonconformity. The legal mm -hmm. nonconformity uh, is a grandfather. Is, is yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So you're saying we could, we would approve office, or or what, John? What you were saying? Or you can approve the proposal. The proposal is for a blended PUD, which is office zoning and a small amount of commercial zoning. You didn't want the small amount of commercial zoning. You could remove that portion from the, the authorization, the, the, uh, the approval that you make uh, of this plan, should you do that. Could, you, could we approve just um, half the front head? <laughs> yes, you could. Mm -hmm. Is that the same thing as not having commercial? Is that no. about that? No, no. I mean that would that would. Uh, I mean that could 
I mean, you could do it anyway. You would do just the first half, front half, um, with the pharmacy and, and one office space. Okay. Does anyone have a motion? Um, no, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> More discussion. Well, this is really one to be ill today, but <laughs> I'm not. I'm not ill. Um, and I, the, you know, the dis it's like, do you make everybody mad at one time or half of everybody happy or? Well, and that's, you know, I think hearing both sides of this, and we've heard this now, I mean, during my entire, um, I think the, wor the word of the night is compromise. We've got to find a place in the middle where, uh, you know, not everybody is 100% mad you're not gonna make everybody 100% happy. Compromise is the word of the night. I mean, I think, you know, and I may, may because I think we need to sift this out tonight. What, where is that middle line, that middle ground between happiness on the side of the developer and happiness on the side of the neighborhood? That line's there somewhere. But we need to find it because we can kick this can down the road some more. For a while, um, it's not the easiest thing to always do that here in front of the in the public forum. But you know, process me darned. I think I think that we need to find a compromise here. One thing, for example, that I would that I would propose personally, in in order to keep the traffic um, in the neighborhood 11th Street um, access closed, I, I would I would if we do go forward to. Uh, on a motion on this, then that would be one, one thing I'd like to see. Um, with the argument of the 12th Street traffic, I don't personally think that that's going to be a much, a more, more of a major issue 12th as it is currently with the development on the south side of 12th, uh, despite the fact that there's no center turn lane. So, you know, as far as traffic on 12th, I think 12th is, is a big enough street to handle that. But in order to minimize the traffic into the neighborhood, uh, one thing personally that I'd like to see is, is, is closure of the 11th Street Avenue. Well, then, then closing it to public access and just having it be emergency access? Correct. Okay. Um, I mean, because if you leave it open to emergency access, the, you know, who's going to enforce that? How is that enforceable? I think the Planning Commission discussion was some sort of actual gate, crash gate, where an emergency vehicle would go, could be public access, you know, wouldn't be able to go. Um, I, and I, 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 I agree with you that, that compromise is, is um, what, what's, you know, we've, we've got to find some of that here. I think uh, for Mr. Ebert's sake, um, you know, there's been a lot of compromise on this plan to this point. Um, you know, he came in with a different go uh, that had quite a bit more to it. And um, I, I appreciate uh, what you've done, uh, Mr. Ebert, on, on, you know, meetings and trying to figure out how can we make this more acceptable. Uh, I think you've made a... Um, a commendable effort in that regard and so from that standpoint given that that he he's known about the overlays and how this is going to work you tell him we're going to approve part of this you could you know and then now go back to the drawing board and see if you can figure it out um i think it should be a vote on what he's proposed at this point um just from the standpoint of you know he's had a long time to try to go back and forth and find something that was going to work for everybody and and this is uh i think as close as it works from a, an economic standpoint and uh, that he thinks, you know, the, the neighbors might be able to live with. Now, from the neighbor's perspective, I don't think that's the case. I don't think they're, you know, a compromise uh, here, um, you know, isn't going to, to match up with this plan, uh, no matter really what we do to it, uh, unless we were to completely, completely gut it. I think we need to, you know, barring some minor changes on fence size or something like that, I think we need to just, you know, make a decision about whether we think this is the right thing for the neighborhood or not. Um, with that said, um, man, I have, as the rest of you had, gone back and forth over this in my head for um, all the times. Um, uh, I've talked to neighbors individually. I've talked to Mr. Ebert individually. Um, you know, trying to figure out what's the best thing to do here, and it is a difficult call. I mean, just really hard to figure out what, it, you know, it makes sense that the hospital would would have some services. I appreciate what Mr. Moore said that some services are. Would, would be, um, I think, acceptable and needed. Uh, it's also true that there's a neighborhood there that people live in, and these are their homes, and they don't want to have people driving in and out of businesses next to their homes. And so 
uh, we've got to find someplace in the middle, uh, or we, we could try to find someplace in this closest we're going to get to the middle because we've been back and forth over it so many times. So um, uh, I think, uh, unfortunately, Dr. Woodlake stepped away, but when he comes back, I, I, I would like to, to, to put the motion out. I don't know if, if you guys would, would want to make a, some sort of amendment to it on fence size. Um, I would. Uh, and that, that was originally in the plan before the Planning Commission raised it, or to the seven foot that I think is in the, or do you want a no fence requirement? Um, I'd rather have no fence and extensive landscaping. We can put that in the motion. I, <laughs> I can fix that. You can just make that part of your motion. Yeah. Are you saying no fence around the entire? No fence at all. Yeah. So. Uh, but I'm open to discussion. I, I'm open to discussion. I apologize for that. Um, did I miss anything fun? <laughs> We're already voting. I made the comment that I think um, You're the we've been through a lot of compromise all, all through this already, and uh -huh. and we need to I think decide on this plan as presented with the, with minor changes. But I don't want I don't think we should change what he's I mean, He's put a lot of effort into trying to find something that works. Yeah, I agree. I don't. I. We, yeah, I is think. The public um, hearing still open, or have we closed? No, the it's closed, and I think we have everything that we need. I'm going to make a motion to approve the PUD as presented. I'm going to second it. Yes, ma'am. With, uh, uh, without the fence change? You, you did miss the discussion of the fence change. Oh. Okay. Amend the motion. Mayor hasn't, Mayor hasn't spoken the motion yet. Mm -hmm. So the amendment, so it would be planning commission recommendation with the following amendments, and that would be to eliminate the fence requirement and require extensive landscaping. Okay. Extensive landscaping, though, to me, that, that's not a definition. It's going to be really hard. And it, then it's left up to the developer or the neighborhood, and one doesn't like the, what the other one's proposing. And I just. Well, there is a landscaping requirement in the uh, over. But basically, it is designed to incorporate fencing as well. So you have fence, and then you have landscaping in front of the fencing. But mm -hmm. it's not. I don't think it's anything close to what you're suggesting in terms of landscaping sufficient to create an actual buffer between the uh, the use and the, I mean, we're basically talking about shrubbery or something that's maybe half as high as the fence. It, well, it too is not overly specific. I, I'm certainly not a landscaper or a builder or anything. I do like um, neighborhoods and I like, um, in, uh, and um, I think a, an eight-foot fence is certainly um, too much. So could the motion say a combination of, lands of landscaping and fencing to, to could it create an appropriate buffer? Could it be consistent with the overlay? That's you, you have a standard that you have. The amendment would be uh, that, that the fencing be consistent, fencing and landscaping be consistent with the uh, overlay requirements, the mixed use overlay. Yes. Does that work? Sure. Okay, so is, and you had the, is your motion for that, that way? Okay, mm -hmm. since she hasn't spoken it, we don't actually have to vote on that. We, we can still make comments? Sure. I, I just, um, I appreciated your comments, uh, Councilor Redlake, on co uh, compromise, and you know, do you make everybody happy or nobody happy or half of whatever? It's actually not to make anybody happy. It's to follow what is best um, according to the to the um, all the plans and the and the regulations that we have to um, follow. Just adds a whole other layer. Well, I, th I think that the neighborhood has done a lot of work in compromising, uh, too, right, in, in not wanting to see something in their neighborhood that, that they feel will be detrimental. And I, I, you know, again, 
having gone back and forth over this, I, if it was my neighborhood, I would be here. Um, it's difficult for me to not, um, to not agree with, with what someone in that neighborhood situation would say. But I think uh, as, a, as a council, we, we have to take some of that emotion out of this um, because that's, I think you have to weigh both of it. I, sure. um, I too am, am think that there's also a wonderful opportunity for a business that has had, um, you know, I think a pharmacy makes perfect sense in that area and doing it in phases helps figure out what needs to go next there. And I um, appreciate that. I also think that there's, this is a, Use of land or a piece of land that is not it's easier for me in my mind to say, okay, we're not uprooting homes, we're not, to, I mean, this is this is land that can be developed. Um, I think that this has a positive, um, positive piece to it. Actually, if this were my neighborhood, I would like this. Mm -hmm. And I um, have, you know, I know this, I do appreciate the work that the neighborhood neighborhood has done. Um, and I, uh, you know, I've spoken to members of the neighborhood and it kind of laughed that, you know, it's, it's a great way to form a neighborhood is to have some adversity. And I, I think the growth in that neighborhood, um, the rest of their area is um, going to be valuable also. Councilor no. Jewel, I go oh. right ahead. No. I was just going to wrap this up and, and call the motion. Uh, a lot of work's been done on both sides. We appreciate it, and we have to try to follow what's going to be best for Stillwater and for Stillwater's growth and for Stillwater's neighborhoods. And it doesn't fit the C3 plan, and so, uh, and there was a lack of thought, was much less this time than last time. I think you said about the same thing about the plan. So that <clears throat> worried me a little bit. So compromise is key. Don't know how else to do this. See the motion, I will. Okay, the, the motion as I understand it from Councillor Wedlake and as seconded by Councillor Zanotti is to uh, adopt the Planning Commission recommendation with the amendment of that landscape, excuse me, that the fencing requirement be changed to and landscape be consistent with the mixed use overlay requirement. Yes. Is there a second to that motion? And there's a second. Okay. She had, uh, Councillor Zanotti had previously seconded that motion. Okay. So. And with a vote of three to two, the motion passes. Okay, that brings us to the next item, which is reports from officers and boards. Mr. Dorman. Nothing to report, ma'am. Mr. McNichol. Um, yes, ma'am. Beginning today, residents can file for election through February 7th at the Bain County Election Board. Council seat five, the mayor's seat, is up for election, and it is a four-year term. The spring municipal general election is set for April 3rd, 2018. The runoff election is scheduled for June 26th if needed. Interested candidates can find more information at... Anybody else have news? Councilor Zanotti. I do. We want to hear your ideas for 2019 as staff prepare next year's budget. Residents have the opportunity to share their thoughts with counselors next Tuesday, February 13th from 5.30 to 7 p.m. at Aspen Coffee in the Lakeview Point Shopping Center. If you're counselors, you send their counselor email addresses. There will be another in-person opportunity scheduled in March. So put on your calendar Tuesday, February 13th, 5.30 to 7 at Aspen Coffee at Lakeview Point Shopping Center. Thank you. Vice Mayor. The 2017 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report has been released. Our current financial positions and what operations various funds are going to. To read the summary and report, go to stillwater.org news slash news. Councillor Joyce. 
Excellent news. This weekend, the 13th annual Dancing with Daddy takes place. Uh, it's uh, my daughter. Is a huge, huge fan. What night are you going? Uh, we're going Friday night. Friday night, what yeah. time? Five, I think. is. The uh, you can go more than once. Did you know you that? Go to all that is them. true. That is true. Uh, yeah, it's super exciting. Um, I may, may be wearing a tuxedo. Um, anyway, but it's this weekend, the 9th and 10th. There are four. About Wednesday, February 7th is the last day that tickets are available. There will be no at the door tickets uh, this year. So for interested dads, tickets can be purchased online at tickets.stillwater.org or you can go by the community center and pick them up. Councilor Wedlick. All right. Uh, so finally, Stillwater Public Library's One Book, One Community will be reared. The event will run from March 1st through April 12th with weekly scheduled events including guest speakers and documentary screenings. All event information is listed online at library.stillwater.org. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, we have, uh, that moves us to appointments. And I would like to make a motion to appoint Pat Zimmerman to, Pat Zimmerman to Block 34 Citizens Task Force. Second. There's a motion and a second to appoint Pat Zimmerman to Block 34 Citizens Task Force. Please vote. And with a vote of five to zero, Ms. Ford, thank you for sitting through this and uh, we welcome you. Thank you for your service. Troop 828, awesome job tonight. <laughs> Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion and a second to adjourn. Please vote. And with a vote of 5-0, we are adjourned. Thank you for being here. Mm -hmm.